This week on Maker Update, a flip out mic for your machine learning pocket project, a shark mask that moves when you talk, a light up soundboard, adding NeoPixels to a backpack, and the Circuit Playground Proto Gizmo. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Adafruit edition of Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. Maybe you even missed me a little bit. Maybe not, but maybe you did. Uh, I missed you guys. And uh, I've also been thinking about Halloween. Maybe it's about time to start thinking about our Halloween projects. Uh, but for now, let's get started with my pick for the Adafruit project of the month. Last month, I showed you a quick demo from Lady Ada of TensorFlow Lite running on an Adafruit Pi Gamer board. Now, Lady Ada has put together an official Adafruit guide and kit, allowing you to train your own machine learning voice model using an Adafruit Pi Badge board. You can train it to recognize yes or no answers, but Diving even deeper, on the Adafruit GitHub account, you can find example scripts for three word voice recognition demos, such as telling the difference between the words cat, dog, or bird. To put a nice polish on the whole thing, the Ruiz brothers created a modified Pi badge case with a flip out microphone holder and space for an attached speaker and rechargeable battery. Aside from being a great platform for making your own machine learning demos and devastating a local science fair, this is a promising start to any number of voice controlled projects that aren't dependent on Alexa or Google Home or Siri. And really, how cool is it to say that you're experimenting with machine learning hardware? It's time for some news. Last week on Adafruit's Ask an Engineer show, Pete Warden from the Google TensorFlow team joined Lady Ada and Philip to demystify all the different flavors of the TensorFlow machine learning software, including TensorFlow Lite and TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. So if you're excited to get into this stuff, but you're a little intimidated by the jargon and the different software, this could give you the confidence to jump in. In other news, version 4.1.0 of Adafruit's CircuitPython platform was rated 10 out of 10 in the latest issue of Hackspace Magazine. The editors tested this version against version 4.0 and found a number of big performance improvements, including NeoPixel flash rate and floating point calculations. This is a great win for CircuitPython. Time now for more projects. Dana Wall has a great write-up on making this sound reactive cardboard shark mask where the jaws move when you talk. The project uses the built-in microphone on a Circuit Playground Express board along with a servo motor, a battery pack, some hot glue, and some string or fishing line. That string connects from the servo horn in the head to the lower jaw and puppets the mouth up and down. It's a fun project, good for kids, and relatively easy to code using make code blocks. The Ruiz brothers also created this palm-sized portable soundboard project. It's like a little sampler that you can load up with your own sounds, trigger with the LED lit buttons, and play back over the internal speaker. The project uses an Adafruit Feather M4 Express board, paired up with a PropMaker Feather Wing for driving audio playback and LEDs, and a Neotrellis RGB board for the matrix of LEDs that live under the silicone pad. The enclosure is 3D printed with custom pockets for all the components to fit in, Audio is loaded up by just connecting the whole thing to your computer over USB and dragging and dropping 16-bit WAV files onto the CircuitPy drive that shows up. It's some sample audio to get you started. Erin St. Blaine's ongoing Burning Man bike project is coming along. Her guide shows how to plan your design, paint and decorate your bike, add lighting to the frame, and an extra rad fiber optic tail flag that shoots out from the back. It's a cool build and a great reference for any kind of crazy bike lights you might want to try. And from the Adafruit community, there are two projects I want to highlight. The first is a guide by Stephanie Nemeth on making a NeoPixel dog collar. It's actually a few years old, but it's new to me and a good reminder that dogs need wearables too. There's also this fun monster box project by Tony Menduk that uses an Adafruit Halloween board and a Feather M0. The Halloween handles the eyeball animation while the audio playback and servo animation is done by the Feather. You can find the code and the 3D design files on Thingiverse. It's time for a few tips and tools. While we're talking about the Hollowing, last week Adafruit announced and showed a quick demo of a new version of the board called the Hollowing M4. It comes with a better display, includes four built-in side-mounted LEDs on the back to give it an eerie glow, and an upgraded Cortex M4 chip. Other than that though, it's keeping the same footprint and features from last year's board, making it easy to adapt to existing Hollowing projects. Also on the horizon, Lady Ada has a new video up showing some of the early tests with a new 20 cent accelerometer called the MSA301. The results look promising so far, so don't be surprised to see these accelerometers included on boards down the line. 
And Liz from Blitz City DIY has a new video up showing how she was able to add NeoPixel LEDs to a backpack that she sewed together herself. The sewing pattern and materials all came from a kit and they look really nice, so that's kind of a neat thing to know about on its own, but even if you're adding NeoPixels to an existing backpack or one that you're modifying, it's a useful video to see how she did it. And finally, for a little Adafruit product spotlight, check out this new bolt-on permaproto board for the Circuit Playground or Circuit Playground Express. It's called the Proto Gizmo, and it gives you a semi-permanent way to mount your project components and breakout sensors. There are 12 M3 standoffs that are attached to the board that also act as electrical connections to the pads that they screw down to. If you love using the Circuit Playground family of boards for prototyping projects or you use them in a classroom setting where you want to avoid soldering directly to the board, these $8 add-ons are a great solution for creating projects that are more durable than just a breadboard. If they're not in stock, sign up to get notified. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. And for weeks where Maker Update is not on the Adafruit channel, you can sign up for the Maker Update email newsletter to stay on top of each week's show, all right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.